Hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. I'm Bowtie David. We live in Destin, Florida, Zone 9B. Not that that matters for this stuff, but there you go. Uh, I kind of let you know where we, some of you know where we are. Today we are going to be talking about seed starting supplies and different things that you need to start your seeds. And there's a few things that I have bought that I wanted to talk about. And I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so I do like to save money. Though I'll admit, I've learned a few things in the past four years of successful gardening that I think have made me a little bit smarter. And maybe it'll inspire you to try something new. Coming up, we are going to be talking about seed starting and actually putting our seeds in the soil that we made two episodes ago in this series. If uh, you're not familiar with, with this series, there is a link in the cards. That's the little I in the circle in the top right hand corner. There is a link to the playlist that has all the videos in this spring 2024 seed starting series. And uh, there's a number of items we, we've talked about in that series. Also at the closing screen of this video, on the left side down here, there will be a link to the playlist and on the right side there is a link to two of the videos probably the first and the next video in the series so be sure to subscribe <laughs> to bowtie life on youtube so you don't miss a thing and uh, videos do come out here on youtube first uh, to those of you who have subscribed you are my heroes i thank you so much for growing bowtie life to what it is today hi i'm bowtie dave so in this video, I want to just go over some basics about seed starting supplies. And I'm not going to talk about the fertilizers or the soil fills or anything that we've already used. I'm going to <coughs> talk more about the seed starting stuff that I use. And yeah, stuff. I'm not the kind of person to go out and spend a few hundred dollars on a lot of supplies. In fact, it's hard to get me to spend $40 on a lot of supplies. So a lot of these are scavenged and I've scavenged more stuff than uh, most people probably. I find, uh, I, I, I think I'm pretty resourceful in, in finding things. One of the uh, first things that I've done is I've, we have saved a whole lot of these solo cups. Mrs. Bowtie and myself host an event at our house almost once, once almost every month, and we use solo cups, and we save those solo cups, and what I do is I'll put a hole in the bottom of them, and that makes a great seed starting cup. If I start a seed in one of these types of uh, containers, this might be what it's up potted to. This year I'm gonna be doing a little bit more seed starting in these. The nice thing about these, well, I eat yogurts most days. There's a little thing, catch the water. You always wanna have a drain hole. If you've seen my video on these, you've seen where I'll take a big stack of these, I have a big long drill bit, and I'll drill 20 or 30 of them at one time, put a hole in the bottom, and you have a great little seed starting cup. These are literally just to hold water. Another way to hold water is with, I've got a jiffy tray around here somewhere. <laughs> I guess I don't. You get these jiffy trays. There's a black tray that goes with this cover. They're all folded together and these come inside it. And there's 12 of these six starters. Makes for 72 seed starts in, at a time which is a lot of new plants. Now, one of the reasons why you might use this type of a setup is because you may not have enough room for a huge setup. And so what this does, this allows me to get 72 seeds in soil and then see what germinates. Because chances are, in fact, unless you're very lucky, everything's not going to germinate. You're gonna see that some things just don't come up. And it happens. Simply put, it happens. So starting out these Jiffy trays, so there we go. I found one of them. 
This is just a very cheap little setup that you can get from your local hardware store or plant center. This is from Jiffy and they do they put a lot of these out every year and you can use these for seed starting. Now if you're a beginner gardener I'm the person that's going to tell you don't go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on seed start trays. Figure things out with cheap stuff. This tray right here it's actually in decent shape. There's a couple of these that are kind of crushed a little bit because I've used them but this thing is on its third or fourth year. This thing, this real thin plastic stuff. You can take care of them and you can make them last year after year after year. So far, I've gotten four years out of the oldest of these and I might be able to get a couple more out of them. That's great just for whatever seven bucks or whatever it is for this very thin thing. You have the seed start trays. You have the uh, water capture tray. This captures water. All these set inside here like so. You put the soil in these. You put your seeds in there. They germinate when you have, and I'll show you what this dome does. With all the soil in here, you put your dome over it like so, and it will keep in the moisture. Now that cover is really only for germinating seeds. Once you have a significant amount of seeds that have germinated, in other words you're starting to see green on top and over half the cells, that's my rule of thumb, half to three quarters of the cells have green, this thing comes off and I set this, put it back into storage. And it does very good for me. So and, and then what will happen after that, you actually can bottom water. We're going to talk about bottom watering a little bit. You pour the water into the bottom, not over the top of your plants. Helps with pathogens, helps keep the leaves dry and the top of the soil dry, which helps to control gnats. And you're going to have gnats, almost guarantee it. Well, I have gnats a few all the time and I like my little fly strips and my little yellow cards that you can get to stick down in there. Those are very good things to have. Don't try to fight nature completely, try to work with it. And understand that you're stepping into nature and there's so much that you can do. Now, these little cheap trays are wonderful. They're especially great for getting started. Year four, I've got three of these trays, three full setups like this with the, with the humidity domes that go with it. And those have suited me quite nicely. We have a quarter acre yard. Before this, we had a 16 foot patio in an apartment. And we made do with what we had. So, you can see here in this video of aerial shot of our property now, I had to get a little more serious about my seed starting trays. And I've actually gone out and purchased these heavier duty plastic trays. I think I got these from Bootstrap Farmer. There's a number of places that sell these. This is significantly thicker plastic. This is going to last a lot longer than those are. Probably two to four times longer. And they also come with their own humidity dome, which is a little more significant. And you can buy these individually or you can buy them as a kit. Now the thing I don't have yet, which I do want, these do come with their own heavy duty seed starting trays and there's two styles. One style has the slots in the corners for roots to come out. Another style has a whole big hole in the bottom and then there's a combination of those two. I am anxious to get some of those that have the slots in the corners so roots can get out better. It's supposed to promote better growth of the roots while it's in the seed starting tray. And I intend to buy a number of probably 60 of these individual things in that heavier plastic. Kevin Espiritu over at Epic Gardening actually pulled a truck up on a tray of his little seed start things that they do. And they're very strong. I'm very impressed considering that very strongly. But again, once those seeds start coming up, they start germinating, you take off that humidity dome and you start with lights. And that brings me to my next supply, lights. And I use a lot of these shop lights. This is just a shop light you get at your local hardware store. 
They don't have a bulb in it. You buy your own bulb. I did buy this 300 watt equivalent LED bulb. This thing actually burns my plants. Okay, it's uh, it's kind of funny because the first time I used it, I had it down close to some plants and it burned them. I do have a whole video on the strength and what kind to get. I like the five thousand, five to six thousand Kelvin bulbs that are 250 watt equivalent. Those are my favorites. I have several of those now and they seem to do my seed starts very good. I turn the lights on when they start germinating and they start reaching up. And what happens is if you don't have a bright enough light, if you use a lower Kelvin, like a 2700 Kelvin or 3000 Kelvin, you look on the little panel on the light bulb and you can see what Kelvin K it is uh, rated at. The uh, 27 to 3000 Kelvin are the yellower looking ones. In fact, your old incandescent bulbs were 2700 Kelvin and they don't have enough of that white light for plants. It takes a lot more of them to do the same that one of these that's five or 6000 Kelvin can do in a single light bulb. Additionally, I do like the 250 watt strength bulb, anywhere 100 to 200 50 watts it seems to work very good for me now eight bucks for the fixture another ten bucks for the light bulb you don't have a lot in those you can go out and get very expensive grow lights and for a marginal improvement they're great do I have any of those grow lights I do not fourth year gardening I'm doing fine I probably could do better, but frankly, I'm not maxing out my capacity at my skill level as it is. So, I don't feel like I should waste a lot of extra money on that. Again, it boils back to, yeah, I'm a cheapskate. I like to get things in a budget. I like, I hate to see waste. And right now, a thousand dollar grow light setup is going to truly be a waste on my skill set. So, lights are very useful for the germination process. Okay, one other thing that I was going to mention is scavenging. I have scavenged a lot of pots. When you go to your garden centers, a lot of times they will have these things just laying around, dozens if not hundreds of them, and some of them will let you have them. They're just throwing them, they may be just throwing them in their dumpster. Ask, simply ask, they'll tell you. If they're throwing them in their dumpster, ask if you can have a hundred of them uh, or whatever. Anybody who's bought seed starts, the bunny seed starts, recognizes these. Those seed starts at the store that come in these, if they die, they end up throwing them out. Bonnie doesn't want these back. And I've actually taken a lot of dead plants for these little cups right here for seed starts. I do give uh, these away. I give the solo cups away with plants. These here, I try not to give away, but occasionally they go anyway, because I do give away a lot of plants. Another thing, well, there's even bigger ones. These are just used pots. Actually, these black ones came with our house. But uh, when we moved in, Another thing that I use is buckets. And these buckets I actually used to grow hot peppers years ago. If I can pull them apart, they're not gonna come apart easily. This is the problem with these square buckets. Here we go. They do get a little stuck together. You can see here, there's holes in the bottom. And I take a drill and put a whole bunch of holes in the bottom of my buckets. These I actually cut the top off because I didn't want that deep of a bucket. But this is another thing that you can plant your plants in. You can grow a hot pepper plant in one of these easily. Put it on a patio, put it on a table. And it's nice and black, looks a little decorative. I did scrub off a label that was here. Just depends on how pretty you wanna get. You can get those five gallon buckets. I have a lot of five gallon buckets that have holes in the bottom because they planted, they had plants in them, tomatoes and hot peppers and cucumbers and beans and a whole bunch of other stuff, basil. These buckets, you can get them for free in some places. This particular bucket came from my local Ace Hardware. If you ever go back to that section that has the chains, this is what those chains come in. It's a, 
it, my Ace Hardware, it's a black square bucket, and they throw those away. And you befriend one of the people there, they will save you. They may save you some of these, and I like those. Another thing that I've saved is, oh, pool supplies. Some of them come in the heavy plastic buckets. I do the same thing with those as well. Clean them up real good, put some holes in them, and you got something to plant in. Another thing you can plant in, you say, oh my goodness, you used a good casserole dish. No, I went down to the local Goodwill and bought a pile of these for about five bucks a piece. It's a great tray. I This one here has ginger stored in it. Uh, nope, not quite. This has ginger stored in it until we're ready to plant it out next month. So these will be planted out in the garden soon. But you can use these for storing things like ginger, uh, sunroot, or you can plant onions in these trays. Another thing, the same, I got this in the same place. This is a nonstick pan that I got at the local Goodwill. And your money goes to a good cause. Not as cheap as scavenging, but it's the same idea. Another thing that I will save is those little containers that your instant meals come in. <laughs> yeah, we sometimes resort to getting a microwave frozen thing and stick it in the you know, you stick it in the microwave and eat your dinner when you don't have time. Life happens. Occasionally we use these, and so I save them. In fact, if you look carefully, you can see that some of these have holes in the bottom, and some of them don't. The ones that don't have holes in the bottom end up being trays for the ones that do have holes in them. So it catches the water underneath. And you can find things to recycle everywhere. This is a... Uh, Jimmy Dean sausage breakfast bowl. So, yeah, I don't spend a lot on supplies. You don't have to. And anyone that tells you you need to go down to the store and buy X amount of dollars worth of supplies is not giving you good advice, especially if you can't afford that. Frankly, we probably could afford more and better stuff but I still see it as wasteful because I can get for free the similar type stuff and it will last me just as long. Another thing, a very resourceful uh, viewer recently here locally asked me about my plant tags and I use these white plant tags all over my garden and I have a lot of them. These are very heavy tags. Amazingly, these tags last me for years and these tags here are old. They're still not going to break. It's a UV-stable plastic. You can see here, this was from a Green Globe artichoke that I planted last September. This label here is from a Dragon Cayenne pepper that I planted September of last year. But look at the writing on it. See how much dimmer it is there? That's because this one sat out in the sun. It's been in the sun for most of the winter. These here are brand new. They look and feel exactly the same. Now, you say, well, where do you get those? Which is what the very ingenuitous viewer asked. He said, where did you get those? Well, I drink almond milk with my cereal. It's my regular lunch. It's, I, drink a, I eat a special cereal that's high in berries and oats and good healthy stuff, and I like my almond milk on it. This container is, I'm presuming, UV resistant because this is what these labels are made of. What I do is I cut them up and I make labels out of the sides of this, and this makes my labels. Another thing you can do with this, you can make a scoop with it. And I made this scoop about three or four years ago, and it's the same exact container. Still just as strong as the day I cut it up, I would presume. There's a little crack here and there, but this is the very scoop that I used to make the soil with just two or three videos ago. Another container that's the same type of plastic is this 30 second outdoor cleaner concentrate that you can find at your local hardware store. This plastic is the same stuff. You can make labels out of this. Talk about recycling. What a great way to recycle. You have labels that will last 
practically forever, as far as I know. They've lasted me four years, and they're nowhere near the end of their life. This also makes for a good scoop as well. So I have a big scoop for big stuff. I'll use this in the compost bin sometimes. A uh, smaller scoop. I have a couple of the smaller scoops, but if you're drinking those items regularly or using 30-second cleaner or, you know, look around at what you have around your house. The, the regular one-gallon milk jugs, I don't think they're UV resistant, but they might be, and you could try it. It's, it's about experimentation. So one last thing, but this will be the very last thing that I'll mention. I do have a few basic tools that I use in the garden. Uh, you might see me use my old butter knife. This was an old silverware set that Mrs. Bowtie and I had, probably the first one we purchased when we first got married. We still have a bunch of them. This is an icing spatula from a former interest of mine creating cakes, and I used it to decorate cakes. A random spoon. I use this to stir up and, and scoop out dirt. And then it gets up more and more complicated. This is one of my later additions is my Hori Hori. It's one of my favorite tools, at Corona Hori Hori. I did spend a little bit of money for that, and I use this a lot. One final thing on labels. A while back, we did spend $15, $16 on this set of foil labels. It comes with little uh, twisty ties to be able to tie these foil labels to your plants. And there's 150 foil labels in here. The cool thing is, what you do is you get a piece of uh, cardboard or some, some kind of a semi-soft writing surface. You put this on there and you write on it with any type of pen. And you can see here, it actually indents the foil. Now this foil label, I have not used very many of them, but where I have them, I used them three years ago, and they still look just like this. They still look great. I'll try to remember in the uh, March Garden Tour that's coming up to point out, I know off the top of my head, there is a chocolate mint plant that has one of these labels that I know I made that label three years ago. It's been in that bag for three years, and it looks just as good as that right out of the package. Now, this is the original package I purchased. I've used a few of these, not as many as I should have, but we'll be continuing to label things. So thank you for can. following along today. Hope that gave you some ideas on where to get supplies. I hope it saves you some money because I really hate the thought of people wasting money. It kills me when I hear someone say, yes, I just went out and bought a thousand dollars worth of whatever to start a garden. <laughs> Excuse me. And it hurts my heart because sometimes those are people that can't afford a thousand dollars and they're only going to grow a couple hundred dollars worth of food. So I hate to see that happen and hopefully you can look around and find ways to start gardening without spending any money or with spending less money. <coughs> Excuse me. Those of you who have already subscribed to Bowtie Life on YouTube, you are my heroes. You have helped make Bowtie Life what it is today, and I do appreciate that. We are working to grow our channel to the next level, and of course when we get to that next level, we will be able to do even more than we are now. For those of you just finding Bowtie Life on YouTube for the first time, uh, this is truly my own personal journal. With my ADD brain, I uh, have tried journaling, I've tried photography, I've tried the, the app, uh, I've tried various methods, but these videos really speak best to my unique brain and keep me going in the garden. Frequently, I will have my videos running on the TV as I'm running around getting ready in the morning for work, and it'll remind me something that I need to do. And I'm, occasionally, I might even stop right there, go out to the garden, take care of a five-minute task that really needed to get done, and continue on with my morning. So this is truly my own journal of everything that I can journal. And so be sure to subscribe to Bowtie Life on YouTube um, so you don't miss a thing as we document all the stuff that happens in the garden. I keep hearing a little noise over here. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, another way you can help grow the channel is to click the thumbs up on this video and share it on your social media. These are two things that 
really help grow the awareness of our videos and help to grow the channel. You share these videos on your social media pages with people, with friends who might just be looking for some information on how to get started planting their own gardens. I've been playing at this for four years. We've produced a lot of food. This past year in 2023, we had over 300 pounds of food that we created for Mrs. Bowtie and myself. And we're very happy that we were able to do that for ourselves and we gave away a lot to friends. So it's just gratifying to know what we can and can find to do in our own property. Y'all have a blessed day.